How you doing, guys? So I've got another movie for you today that uh, is about a survival situation, shit hit the fan type scenario. I love going through these movies and using them as thought experiments to try and kind of see what lessons can be learned, what things that you may have thought of or not thought of. Trying to talk about what might be realistic and unrealistic and things like that. The movie this time is called How It Ends. It's a new Netflix movie. And it just came out a few days ago, I think, on, I think, the 13th or something like that. So it's fairly new. As usual, I'm going to be talking about fairly specific stuff that happens throughout the movie. So if you don't want any spoilers, go ahead and watch the movie. Most people have Netflix, or at least know someone who does. So in that sense, it's free to watch, even though you're paying for the Netflix subscription. So if you don't want any spoilers, go ahead and watch that movie now. It's about two hours long. It's decent, not great, not terrible. Probably more enjoyable for people like us who are into preparedness and stuff than just the average moviegoer, but not a bad movie. Pretty enjoyable for uh, prepper-minded people, so go ahead and watch that and then come back and finish this video. So for those of you who are still watching or have come back, the movie is about this guy who leaves Seattle, where his fiance is, to travel to Chicago to talk to her parents presumably to like ask them for her hand in marriage and things like that. He doesn't really get along with the dad. And while he's in Chicago, he's like FaceTiming the girl in Seattle and she hears some sort of huge noise or boom or rumbling. And then all of a sudden they lose the call. And then shortly thereafter, the power in Chicago goes out too. So it's some sort of dramatic shit at the fan event. It's not an EMP though, because cars work, electronics work, but the grid is down in terms of the power grid. So they quickly make the decision, or the dad at least quickly makes a decision that he wants to try and go all the way out to Seattle from Chicago to try and rescue the daughter because from this unknown apocalypse. Now, you never really find out what the event was. It was obviously some sort of either nuclear or comet or I, I think it's probably some supposed to be some sort of military or nuclear attack just because of the way things work. The fact that power was lost in Chicago shortly after Seattle, which is way too far away if it was just a localized event. But it doesn't really ever tell you what the event is. It's not really that important for a movie. Like similar to something like The Road. It's just a shit hit the fan kind of scenario. So they make the decision to go all the way out there. So they set out on this road trip and all the foibles and adventures they have along the way. So the first thing, I like to go through the things that they did wrong, the things that they did right or could have done better, things like that, things that I think are unrealistic, etc. So as far as the shit hit the fan scenario goes, it's hard to know what's unrealistic or realistic about what's happening without knowing what really was supposed to have happened, but I kind of like that because from the eyes of the characters, you wouldn't know what happened, so we don't necessarily need to know as the audience either. kind of makes it even more... Um, intriguing to not really know what's happening. They just know they lost contact, all of a sudden they lost power, thousand miles away, something crazy is going on. It's not gonna be a short-term thing. As usual, one of the negative things that the characters have done is just a general lack of preparedness. You know, they don't have a significant amount of preps or things like that. The father is slightly prepared. He's pretty well prepared. They don't go into his preps, but he has like a go bag. He mentions a go bag and he has a firearm, things like that. So they have a general supplies, but um, they're just taking a normal car, trying to go from Chicago to Seattle, and then she hit the fan scenario. I think he had a one five gallon gas tank, which obviously that was fairly unrealistic because someone who just recently had to drive from Florida to Vegas, which is twice that distance, is over 2,000 miles. But still, that was four days of driving under normal totally fine conditions and shitloads of gas. So you would need a lot more gas. And I don't think it would be smart to just go on a thousand mile journey with 300 miles, 400 miles worth of gas and not knowing how you're going to get more in a crazy shit hit the fan scenario. And they don't seem to have prepared for the eventuality of either the car breaking down or having to hit the road with gas runs out. They didn't really have any way to carry their gear, any alternate means of transportation like bicycles or carts or anything like that. So that was the downside. One of the things I will say about the good thing is they act immediately. The dad makes a decision within an hour or so of the event. He knows it's super serious. He knows they're going to head out there. So they don't waste any time like in the survival family movie that I last reviewed in this series. They took a few days before they really realized that this was serious and they needed to leave. The The Forrest Whitaker's character in this decides almost immediately what he's going to do, which is good. So that was a good thing. The um, It shows him storing up water bottles. 
in one scene, which I mentioned before, the milk jug type that are cloudy HDPE. They, they're fragile and they tend to break down and spring leaks really easily. Not the best storage for that situation. You definitely want to get either the PET, like the clear hard plastic, two liters, something like that. Those bottles are much more robust. You can throw a two liter on the ground as hard as you can and most of the time it's not even going to break. Whereas the, the caps on those milk jugs don't even stay on very well. You can squeeze the bottle sometimes and they'll just pop off or the plastic will rupture, things like that. So get a different type of bottle, presumably or preferably something like a military jerry can, a big plastic rugged water bottle. We don't really know what type of other equipment he has in his go bag. He does at one point have a... Um, a fairly serious first aid kit to where he can deal with even a tension pneumothorax, like where the pressure builds up in the lungs. He has a pretty serious first aid kit and at least some knowledge on how to use it. So that was a good thing by the character. And um, they, uh, as I mentioned, they're going down the road. They didn't seem to have thought of the 100% guaranteed eventuality that there would be roadblocks, either from the government or from hostile characters. So again, unlike in the survival family movie where the, they don't really have much trouble dealing with people. It's just more about getting the things that they need to survive. In this movie, which I think is very realistic, they have a lot of trouble with hostile people who are out and about in the uh, apocalypse. And I think that absolutely would be the case. People roadblocking, someone pretending to be a cop, things like that. There's multiple scenarios where the people had, the main characters had opportunities to either get another gun or take an empty gun with them and they didn't do it which is completely stupid to me. Even take an empty gun. There's no reason not to, especially if you're driving in a car. If you were walking and every, you know, you already had a bunch of gear, maybe it might make sense to leave it behind, but I don't think there's, you would have to be, have a really compelling reason for me to not take as many guns as I could, even empty ones, because who knows, you come, they have a nine millimeter, you know, you could easily come across some more nine millimeter. They have two guys. It's better to have an empty gun, even if, you know, for brandishing, say, you know, you can, People don't know that it's empty. In fact, that brings up another point. Early in the movie, right after they hit the road, they encounter some people who try to shake them down at a gas station before things get too bad. And Forrest Whitaker has to brandish the gun and chases him off. And in their second encounter with hostile forces, they have to grab the gun again when they're in the car, and he tells the other guy to load it. And it's like, he's like, he wasn't loaded. So not only was his gun not loaded, this is one of the biggest mistakes he makes in the movie, not only was his gun not loaded as soon as he set out on the road, during an apocalypse for a you know road trip through whatever situation he doesn't even know, which is completely stupid. He didn't even load it after he already had to brandish it to uh, to save himself. So completely stupid. If you have a reason to have a gun, you have a reason to have a loaded gun. There's absolutely no reason to have an empty gun with you unless, like I said, you don't have any ammo for it. Then it's at least better to have something that people think you could you know harm them with than nothing. But that was a huge mistake that the character made. And I don't even know if it made sense with the character, the type of guy they're showing. It seems like a wild, wild decision to not load your gun in a situation like that. So like I said, they weren't really ready to for the roadblocks. They encountered a government one. He was able to talk his way through it, which I think is fairly unrealistic. They would have heard so many sob stories and excuses by the time they got up there to this roadblock. So they weren't ready to do any sort of off-roading. He just had a Cadillac. You know, they weren't ready to do any sort of hoofing or walking when the car broke down, things like that. Um, they didn't have any sort of NBC protection. Obviously, in a situation like that, one of the first things you should think of is, is some sort of attack, either chemical or nuclear or something like that. So if you don't have that stuff ahead of time, gas mask, thyroid, um, iodine for your thyroid, things like that, there's not much you can do about it. But you still should have something like ponchos, some sort of breathing, you know, N95 mat, anything you can get your hands on to deal with this stuff. Because when he does get out to Seattle later, there is a bunch of ash everywhere. So you don't know if it's supposed to be a volcano or nuclear or something like that. So they weren't really prepared for what would have been a fairly obvious possible cause for this sort of shit hit the fan event. So overall, I think those are the main things. Most of the movie is them doing this road trip, dealing with the uh, hostile people they find along the way, which I think is realistic. They uh, were unprepared, but most people are, so that's not really a knock on the movie. It's just, you know, the way things would be. But the preparations that they did do made sense. There was just, The only ones that really didn't make sense were, like, not loading the gun and things like that or leaving a gun behind. That makes no sense at all. But overall, I thought it was a fairly decent movie. 
pretty uh, intriguing scenario that deals with it fairly realistically. I don't think there's anything uh, tremendously unrealistic in the movie. So it's a, a good watch for people who are into that sort of thing. I enjoyed it. It's not great, but it seems to be getting a lot more flack than deserved online for as far as ratings go and reviews and things like that. But it's worth watching if you're into preparedness. Let me know what you guys think about what they did wrong or did right and different things you could do in that scenario to have a higher success rate. Obviously having a better bug out situation in general would serve their purposes a lot better. Four wheel drive vehicle where you could drive around roadblocks, staying off of major roads and things like that. Oh, another thing that, that reminds me, one of the things that he did right that these are two things that I forgot is he did show him with a, a map. So you have to have physical maps if you're doing any sort of travel or bug out because you're just never going to know <laughs> the best way to go across a thousand mile trip without having at least some reference material. And this, and then the other issue is something that I mention all the time. And I was talking about to my girlfriend throughout the movies that when people leave a spot, like they left Chicago or he gets to his, um, his dad's house at one point and there's nobody there, always leave some sort of note or message about where you were, like when you got there, if you're coming back, where you're going, everything you know. No one tends to do that. So because it's certainly possible in a situation where you don't have any communications, where you could leave a spot, they show up there, and you're gone, and then you get to where they are, and they're gone, and no one knows what happens. So when he gets to Seattle and finds the girl's, his uh, fiance's apartment, she had left a note, which I thought was obviously something very smart to do in a real world situation, something you should always do. It would might maybe be better to come up with some sort of rudimentary code that you can use just so that anyone who walks into the place doesn't know where you're going, which is probably not a huge risk, but it would be helpful. So, uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think, and I'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching.